Hello friends, this video on states of matter part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 6. So we'll do a recap or we'll just have a brief overview of the history of the gas law. The first law was given by Boyle in 1662, where he has told that P1 into V1 is equal to P2 into V2. So where my temperature and uh, temperature is constant and my number of moles is also constant. We will we'll explain this law in, in the next few slides. The next law observed was by the Charles, it's called Charles law, it's 1617 itself, where he told that V1 by T1 is equal to V2 by D2, where other parameters, for example, T and N are constant. Then in 1809, Luzek gave a law where it told that pressure by temperature is constant, uh, where P1 by T1 is equal to P2 by T2, where my volume is constant and my number of moles is constant. And then I have a law by Avogadro that says that V1 by N1 is equal to V2 by N2 and 1811. So these were the four basic laws of the gas and these all came from 1662 to 1811 and we'll explain all these laws one by one. So let's start with the Boyle's law. So Boyle's law on the basis of his experiment this Robert Boyle, he reached the conclusion that at a constant temperature, please note the temperature is constant, also the mass is also constant, this mass is also constant of the gas. The pressure is of the fixed amount of gas is inversely proportional to volume. So if you see in this case, my mass of gas is constant, if you see all this number of uh, dots of molecules is constant, you are increasing the pressure by putting more weights here, the volume is decreasing. Right, the mass is constant. If you see, also my temperature is constant. Temperature is constant. The pressure varies. You increase the uh, pressure, the volume decreases. Right. So if you see, uh, you increase the pressure, the volume decreases. You increase the pressure, the volume decreases. You increase the pressure, the volume decreases. Right. So you increase the pressure by putting more weights, the volume decreases. So pressure and volume are inversely proportional. This is what Boyle observed long back by his experiment and this law is called Boyle's law. Correct? So what he did was he had this setup where his mass of the mole is constant, you see it's all constant, temperature is constant, he's increasing the pressure, he'll see, he'll see that the volume is increasing, decreasing the pressure, the volume is increasing, increasing the pressure, volume increasing, decreasing pressure, volume increasing, right? So this is kind of graph he got and this is law is called Boyle's law. And thus he came to a conclusion that P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2. And please note that at high pressure, the gas deviates from Boyle's law. Only at medium kind of temperature, low temperature, the gas have, uh, obeys Boyle's law. But at high, high pressure, the gas deviates from Boyle's law. I'll tell you why, because this Boyle's law is for ideal gas. At high pressure, what happens? The gas behaves like a real gas. We'll explain that when we discuss uh, about the real gas, we'll explain that at high pressure, my um, when most of the gas, the, the intermolecular force of attraction comes into play and that's why it doesn't follow Boyle's law because Boyle's law is for idle gas. And please note all the law which we will discuss now will be for idle gas. And there's a logical explanation also for the Boyle's law. So let's suppose I have one uh, balloon or something and I have some molecules here and they are all gas. So they are gas, they are trying to expand, right? But if I apply external pressure on this, if I apply external more pressure on this, what will happen? It gets squeezed, right? It gets squeezed, correct? Apply more and more pressure, more and more pressure, it will get squeezed further. Correct? Why? Because if you apply more pressure here, you get squeezed here. And that's why it's selling. My 
प्रेशर एंड वॉल्यूम्स आर इनवर्सली प्रोपोर्शनल यू इंक्रीज द प्रेशर द वॉल्यूम डिक्रीज डॉक्यूम एक्सटर्नल प्रेशर राइट इंक्रीज एक्सटर्नल प्रेशर द वॉल्यूम डिक्रीज राइट बिकॉज हेयर my mass is constant and my temperature is constant let's suppose so i have some fixed mass number of uh, molecules here my temperature is constant increase the pressure till it's squeezed the volume decreases so you want to perform some experiment in the lab you can do that so for that what you can do is you can have this uh, jar and you can uh, have this uh, pump fixed to it please make sure there is no air leakage here put a balloon here fill it Now, if you pump it, you'll see that the volume of the balloon will decrease. The volume of the balloon will decrease. Why? Because the pressure you you increase the pressure here, increase the pressure here, the volume of the balloon will decrease. Here, also you can see that pressure is just being positive. When you increase the pressure, and the pressure I'm talking about is the external pressure here, right? Please don't talk about the pressure inside the balloon. I'm talking about Pressure outside the balloon. I'm not talking about the pressure inside the balloon. I'm balloon. So I'm talking about the external pressure. You increase the external pressure, the volume decreases. Right? Some of the graphs were plotted on basis of Boyle's law, and they call isotherms because the temperature is constant in isotherms. Isotherms are nothing but the curves where my temperature is constant. Also, if you see in in Boyle's law, I told P one P one is equal to P two P two, right? And I tell that temperature and mass is constant. So mass is constant is okay, which is something which we don't worry much. But here the temperature is constant is something which is critical. So temperature is constant, so we'll get isotherms, correct? So if somebody asks from Boyle's law, what you'll get? Which kind of graph you'll get? So we'll get isotherms, right? Because in in Boyle's law, the temperature is constant. So if you draw pressure and volume graph at different temperature of some gas, you get something like this. So at high temperature, this is the red one. The low temperature, the green one. The lower temperature, you get the blue kind of lines. And if you draw a pressure one by v kind of uh, graph, you get this kind of line. So at high temperature, if you see, the line is more steep. Low temperature, the line is less steep. And why it is happening? We'll explain that. See, in a high temperature. The high temperature uh, or the low temperature actually at low temperature uh, my gas behaves like a ideal gas. We'll explain that in the next two slides when we talk about the ideal and ideal gas. I'll take I'll take this point. So it's a conclusion from the Boyle's law. The first is the gases are highly compressible. Right, if you have seen the experiments, so we had the balloon and we compress it further by putting more pressure. That means the gases are highly compressible. You can compress it. The second uh, conclusion we got is a given mass of gas is compressed. The same number of molecules occupy a smaller space. That means the gas becomes denser. In the case of balloon, we have seen number of molecules are all same. The molecule, right, the n was same. So we squeeze it; it becomes smaller. But the same number of molecules now occupy this one, so it becomes denser. It becomes denser, right, with high pressure. And there's a relationship between the density and the pressure of the gas. So density was nothing but density is nothing but mass by volume, right? So and I'm saying that my P into P into V is constant, correct? And density is mass by volume, so volume is nothing but d by m. So you can write here p to d by m is nothing but constant. Or you can write this this fashion is m into some constant so d is nothing but if you see. Let me do it once again. Density is equal to mass by volume. P to V is equal to some constant. I told. So I can say V is nothing but some constant by P. So I'll replace this guy here. So M by V, V is nothing but K by P. 
right? That's what I have got. Density is nothing but m by k into p, right? And, and mass is also constant. This is also constant. I can write that as nothing but k dash into p. So density is directly proportional to pressure. To so increase the pressure, density improves. That's what whatever we explained just now. We are trying to prove mathematically. The density is density. This way is directly proportional to pressure. Correct. We we'll take some example on Boyle's law. It says that the balloon is fitted with hydrogen at room temperature. It will burst if the pressure exceeds 0.2 bar. If at one bar pressure the gas occupies 2.27 liter, up to what volume can the volume be expanded? See, there is a balloon here, right? So the amount of gas which was here in that, that gas occupied 2.27 liter in the one bar of pressure. So when let's suppose when the pressure was one bar, my volume was 2.27 liter for the same gas. The same gas is now put into this balloon. And I'm saying that it can hold at the max 0.2 bar pressure, right? So that means I have to find the volume at which it will burst or the maximum volume. So let's assume that volume is V2. So I know the Boyle's law says that P1 V1 is going to P2 V2. P1 is one bar into 2.27 is equal to P2 is 0.2 bar into V2. You saw this, you V2 is get 111.35 liters. So the maximum volume it can have is 11.25. Okay. Actually, I think the question should be the pressure is uh, exceeds or not, the pressure is decreased. Or pressure is less than because see at one bar pressure if it is one bar pressure one bar pressure the volume was let's suppose how much 2.27 you decrease the pressure if you get 0.2 the volume becomes 11 point you further decrease the pressure it will burst it will burst so, if the pressure is less than 0.2 bar, it will burst. I think this word exceeds is not correct, it's a little confusing. I hope you understand the point. So, if the pressure is 1 bar, it is the volume is 2.27 liter. You decrease the further pressure, you decrease the pressure, the volume increase, right? It becomes 11.35 liter. You decrease it all the more, it will burst because it can, because the balloon it can withstand only that much volume. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.